everybody. It's Helen Hillix, and I'm your host for From My Heart to Yours and my YouTube channel, Helen Hillix. And I'm here today to talk about the topic of Do You Matter? And one of the top complaints that I hear from clients is, you know, I don't matter, I don't matter. Well, if you act like you don't matter, then you won't. If you think you don't matter, you believe you don't matter, then you don't. So I'm going to talk today about where we get the idea that we don't matter and all the different ways that we try to deal with that feeling of feeling like we don't matter and what you can actually do to end up feeling like you do matter. So let's break it up. You know, where do we get that idea that we don't matter? And, and is it important anyway? Well, that depends on your spiritual philosophy, I guess. But generally speaking, it's very important. We, we feel like it's very important whether we matter or not. And where do we get that idea? Well, we get it originally from our parents, don't we? You know, if you were an only child and you were beloved of your parents or your one parent or whatever, and they made you feel like you were the sun and the moon to them, then you're naturally going to feel like you matter, probably a lot more than you actually do matter. And on the other hand, you know, if you had an alcoholic mother or an absent father or whatever, you're going to end up feeling like you matter a lot less than you actually, than is healthy for you to feel that you matter. You know, you, you end up feeling like you don't matter at all. So those are kind of two extreme examples, but we all lie somewhere on that continuum from feeling like we were absolutely worthless when we were children. That's the way we were treated. Or we were a prince or princess. And we should, everyone should be bowing down to us. So what do you, what do you learn when you're a kid? You know, that's the real question. What did you learn? You know, did your parents give you chores to do? And acknowledge those chores and say thank you for your contribution that really helps the whole family if everybody contributes what they have to offer that really helps the whole family that would be great but that's not generally how it's done if however you did have that experience of you know we are a family unit and everybody contributes and everybody sees that they're their contribution matters, that creates a really healthy attitude about do you matter and what you can contribute to the whole. Or did they act like you were incompetent and that, you know, oh my God, it's so much trouble to teach you how to iron or how to sweep or how to mow the lawn. I'm just going to do it myself. You know, that's a common thing that I see with families is that the parents are impatient to teach the children and the children end up feeling like they can't do anything really. So that leads to another kind of outcome. So how can you change what you learned? Well, let's talk about what the ego tells you to do and the, the natural reactions to those childhood experiences. Let's talk about the one where you were the beloved only child of a, of a parent or parents. That person feels entitled, as I was saying before. They feel entitled. They feel like they matter no matter what they're doing. You know, they, they matter. They don't have to make any effort. They matter. And, you know, you should just be happy to breathe the same air that they are breathing. So they end up attracting partners that will go along with the idea that, oh my God, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And they want to treat you that way because they see you that way too. That's, that's what they're going to go after. They're not going to go after, you know, a situation where everybody's making uh, equal contributions because they feel like they matter more than other people. Let's just face it. They matter more than other people. Another coping strategy is that if you learned that you didn't matter as a child, 
you try harder and you turn into a people pleaser and you use part you you generally attract partners who don't validate you and they end up just taking for granted the contributions that you make and you just keep making them and making them and making them kind of the doormat syndrome and then there is also the one of you know i i realize i don't matter i'm kind of incompetent and so i am not going to make any attempt at doing anything because i know i don't matter and it doesn't matter anyway you know this used to irritate the hell out of me with this one person who would say you know i'm not going to the group today a group that they had committed to attending once a month or whatever it was i'm not going today you know it, it won't matter to anybody you know you, you think it'll matter whether i'm there or not and it irritated me, but then on the other hand, I thought, oh my God, the poor person, they don't believe they matter. That no one's gonna notice whether they are there or not. And this is kind of goes back to the title of this show, you know, if you don't act like you matter, you won't. Well, you know, enough times if a person doesn't show up to a group that they committed to, and they are acting like they don't matter to the group, then the group will just go on without them and ultimately they won't matter. But that's a very sad situation and I see that all the time. And then there's another one is, we matter but only if we make ourselves indispensable. And that was my pattern, that was my MO most of my life, is I matter because I learned very, very young in life that I could make myself indispensable to my mother. And so I did. You know, I potty trained my sister is the story that I potty trained my sister when I was two and she was one. Now, I, that's really kind of hard for me to imagine that I could manage her diaper or whatever it was, you know, when I was two years old, but that's the story. And my parents both stick to that story. So I was busy making myself indispensable at two years old. So, you know, and, and also working, 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 you know, that's another way I've tried to make myself indispensable. So, you know, I attract partners who don't want to work as hard as I work. You know, they, they are happy to have me make myself indispensable. So I'm just kind of get throwing that in as a little bonus is the kind of partners that we end up attracting when, when we get stuck in these patterns. So let's take a look. Does any of these patterns work? Well, no, not really. You know, all of them lead to ultimately lead to resentment, you know, on the part of the person themselves or on the part of the people around them you know if you're one of those that's that feels entitled then the people around you are going to resent you and that's going to end up in unhappy relationships and you're going to end up alone that doesn't feel good if you're the kind of person who feels like they don't matter and therefore they don't make any effort at all then you know like i said in the title if you think you don't matter you act like you don't matter then you won't and then you just become invisible. This person would say all the time, you know, I feel left out. You know, I feel like nobody pays any attention to me. Well, you know, what are you doing in the, in the group of people that you want to be included in? Do you call them? Do you offer to help them? You know, what do you do? So, you know, it, it doesn't work. That person ends up feeling left out and lonely because they have given up. They want other people to make them feel that they matter when they make no effort themselves. That doesn't work, does it? And neither does it work the way I've done it, you know, of trying to make myself indispensable because then I still feel alone because I feel like I'm trying, 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 trying all the time, uh, making myself indispensable. I'm exhausted and I feel, I feel alone too. So, None of these patterns works. So, what does work? <laughs> you know, what does work? What does make you feel that you matter? Well, it's, that kind of comes down to the same spiritual principles, really, of oneness. Because if you remember the spiritual principle of oneness, that we are all one, 
and that you matter because you're here, because the universe made you, because you exist, you matter just as much and perhaps no more than a grain of sand matters to the beach. And I always think of that metaphor because it really touches me that, you know, I am but a grain of sand in, in the beach or I am but a drop of water in the river or the ocean. And you can say, well, that's absolutely nothing. That isn't, you know, a grain of sand doesn't matter. A drop of water doesn't matter. But collectively, all the grains of sand make up the beach. If you say that one grain of sand doesn't matter and another grain of sand doesn't matter, then all the grains of sand don't matter, then there's no beach. And the same thing with the ocean or the river. And that's the way we are, is that if I remember that I matter no more and no less than a grain of sand on the beach or a drop of water in the ocean, in a way that used to just trigger the hell out of my ego because I desperately didn't want to be ordinary because if I was ordinary, I would never be noticed and then I would not get my needs met and I wouldn't matter and I would die. You know, ultimately that's the fear of small children is that they have to find a way to matter to the people around them or they won't get noticed and they literally will die. But that fear stays with us, but that doesn't mature. And so even though it's irrational, when you get bigger, we still carry that fear that we have to make sure that we matter to somebody. And, you know, to the person who doesn't make any effort, you know, they, they matter to themselves still. They, they get to feel like a victim. And that is them showing themselves that they matter. You know, poor me. They're giving all their attention to me. So everybody has their way of trying to please the ego in being special in some way. I'm the most put upon, I'm the most victimized, I'm the most indispensable. But if we can dispense with all of that and remember to go back to our spiritual beliefs, to our spiritual principles that I am like the grain of sand on the beach and I matter because I exist, because I am part of the magic and the mystery of the oneness. And if you can embrace that idea and get your ego to calm down and really connect to how good that feels to feel like I am a part of the oneness, I am a part of the universe, and nothing can change that. Nothing can make me not matter, really, from that paradigm. So that basic foundational belief that I exist and therefore I matter because I'm part of the oneness is the thing that can bring you the deepest sense of relaxation about whether you matter or not. And along with that, the second part of, you know, what does make us feel we matter is remembering to be guided in your choices. So I don't want to be guided by my ego in choosing a partner. I don't want to be guided by my desperate need to be indispensable when I decide how much to work. I don't want to be dominated by feeling entitled or feeling invisible or whatever all those ego patterns are. I want to be guided by higher consciousness. You know, I want to ask what's for the highest good of all, including me. How many hours a week should I work? Is it, is it, 25? Is it 45? You know, and you wait to be guided. And that way you are comfortable, you are relaxed, you feel aligned, that you are making the right contribution. It might even be sometime you hear zero hours this today, zero hours this week, whatever, but it's like, then that's the right contribution. But otherwise, we are being driven and guided by all these other mandates. You have to prove your worth. You have to please your partner. You have to, you know, feel sorry for yourself. You have to relax and feel entitled, whatever it is. And there are probably many, many patterns I did not discuss. But if you can set aside those agendas 
and just ask for guidance, then you can relax into feeling that you are making the right contribution, whether that's at your job, you know, in your partnership at home, in your community, wherever that is. And when you make the right contribution, you feel relaxed, as I was saying, and you can focus on feeling internally rewarded because it feels good to make the right contribution. It may be hard work, but it feels good to make that contribution because you feel aligned and you feel that it's the correct contribution. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next piece of it is to release the outcome that you're not dependent on other people to, um, to have to reinforce what you did or reward what you did. You are internally rewarded. It, it's intrinsic to the task. You, it, it's its own reward. And if you can remember all those things that you matter because you're part of the oneness and you can choose the right contribution to make to the oneness, to the, the whole, to the community, to the family, to the partnership, to your job, because it does matter that you make a contribution. People don't feel good when they don't make a contribution. It's like we're just here sucking up resources. That does not feel good. So we do, you know, part of feeling that you matter is making a contribution. But that can look all different kinds of ways. It, it doesn't have to look spectacular. You know, you don't have to feel like you're a star, you know, that you're a queen, you know, all this hype that's on social media now, you know, you can be a millionaire, you know, you can be an entrepreneur. Well, not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. You can find the, the love of your dreams. Well, I hope you can, but whatever it is, if you can release those agendas and let yourself be guided, then you know you're making the right contribution and you're in the right relationships and then you can relax. And that does make you feel like you matter because you feel that you're in the right place making the right contribution. And if you can feel internally rewarded by the, the endeavors that you feel guided to do, and you can release any kind of rewards externally, any kind of outcomes, then you can feel that you matter and you can be relaxed about it and you can be confident about it and you can give up all those games and patterns and must do's ah, and release the need to satisfy the ego and realize that you can just relax and do your part and that you matter because you exist in the oneness. So I love you guys. If you have any topics you'd like me to talk about or any questions about this or any comments, please leave them and I promise you I will answer. And otherwise, I will see you next week.